Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Beanie and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing the top 10 left fielders and guys I just want to remind you that if you retweet this video, go to my Twitter, find this video that I tweet out and retweet it and you will get an entry into the wildcard drawing to participate in my tournament that I'm holding on December 29th. Uh, to December tw uh, to December 31st. Good Lord, I can't talk. But uh, but anyways, just gonna remind you guys of that if you're interested in doing that. And uh, but yeah, with that being said, let's get into the top 10 left fielders. Okay, I know I say this about every list, but this list really was very very difficult to make. I ended up having to split hairs on a lot of different players, and I had to end up like kind of calculate: Do I value defense that much in left field? Like how much the speed matter yeah, j just a lot of a, a, a lot of little things separated a lot of these guys so maybe the number 10 guy you think should be higher and I don't know maybe you should but there was not a huge difference between like number 10 and number four you know it, it, it you just really end up splitting hairs once you get into individual outfield positions for whatever reason but uh, but anyways, yeah. At number ten, we have uh, the end the ninety five overall Andrew Benintendi. This is a very solid card. Um, one of the better uh, future stars. The, you know, the position player uh, future stars really were kind of underwhelming. Even like the big one, you know, the ninety six overall Yon Mankata was kind of underwhelming. It's just not really all that impressive. But this card, it has some value. I mean, ninety one seventy five versus righties. He's not inept versus lefties. He plays solid defense, and for a left fielder, his speed isn't awful. Just overall, a very, very solid card, but not somebody that, you know, I, I, I really got excited about. And uh, that that's kind of the thing. Left field isn't the deepest position, but there are a lot of very, very solid but not spectacular players, if that makes any sense, in left field. So, uh, so yeah, Andrew Benintendi coming in at number 10. Coming in at number 9 is the 94 overall Michael Brantley. And offensively, this card and the Benintendi are very, very, very similar. They both have really good contact versus righties. Very, like, pretty good contact versus lefties. They have a good bit of power versus righties and not a lot of power versus lefties. And they both have really good vision. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird how similar their offensive profiles are. And uh, But the big factor that ended up giving Michael Brantley the edge was the fact that he had such good speed and stealing. And I thought that that could be more valuable on your team than maybe the defensive bump that Andrew Benintendi got. Because if you're playing a guy in left field... I, I just, I don't know, I think you kind of want more offense out of that position, and I think that this Michael Brantley having a tad more speed would uh, would kind of help provide that. So that's the reason why he comes in at number nine. I do worry a little bit about the defense, but the, since he's going to be playing in left field, um, oftentimes, you know, you, that that's where you end up hiding your, your worst fielder or your second worst fielder. So the bad defense doesn't really bother me too much, but it is something to keep an eye on. At number eight, we have the 90 overall Kyle Schwerber, and this one is is one that I really went back and forth on, because just looking at his raw attributes, I'm very, very tempted to leave him off the list, because he plays really bad defense, he doesn't have any speed, he has really low vision, like your PCI isn't going to be that big. The big factor is basically anecdotal evidence. Like, I, I have so many people... I just recently acquired this card, so I don't have that big of a sample size to really uh, talk about. But I've heard so many people say that this card plays so much higher than his attributes that, you know, ostensibly I have to kind of start to believe that it's true, that this card really is that good. And I can see why. Versus righties, he is a monster. 94, 99, I mean... If you just if you just like touch the ball, it's gonna go a long, long way. Um, but against lefties, I just like I, I even hear people saying that he's really good against lefties. But man, I know that I would have a ton of trouble hitting with this card with 53 contact and 34 vision. I mean, you're starting to get into the territory where your PCI isn't going to be that much bigger than that of a pitcher's. Um, I know he does have that 84 power to go along with it, so I guess if you can get a hold of the ball, he could hit lefties pretty good. But basically the reason that this guy made the list is just because so many people have told me that they hit really well with him. So, uh, so yeah, 
the the 90 overall Kyle Schwarber makes the list at number eight. At number seven is the 98 overall Luis Gonzalez, and this feels kind of low for the Luis Gonzalez, but there is a big factor that kind of comes into play here, and it's the one-handed long swing. He has the worst swing in the game. So, uh, so, so that, that's a problem. Now, it is mitigated a bit because he does hit from the left side, but I ended up keeping three players that you might be expecting to see on this list. I ended up not putting them on this list because of their swing. Those three players are uh, Matt Holliday, the 95 Matt Holliday, the 95 Dante Bichette, and the 94 Willie Stargell. Um so, you know, j just if you're if you're waiting to see those guys, they're not going to be on the list. Those, those were kind of my honorable mentions. Those were the guys who were really close. But I kept all of them off the list because of their swing. This 98 overall Luis Gonzalez, though, even though he has a bad swing, his raw attributes are just good enough that he gets on the list. I mean, his raw attributes are among the best uh, hitting left fielders in the game. So I had to take that into account, too. Um, but the reason he's not any higher is that the swing, he doesn't play very good defense, and he's not particularly fast or anything like that. So for those reasons, I couldn't put him any higher. So he ends up coming in at number seven. This next guy I might get a little bit of pushback on. The 94 overall Alex Gordon. Uh, I think a lot of people may see this guy, maybe that he should even be higher than this on the list. And I can see why, man. He is go He's the best defensive left fielder in the game probably I I don't know maybe there's like one weird guy who plays a better defensive left field but I can't think of any right now he is a stud defensively and he's very solid offensively too 91 74 versus righty 70 71 versus lefties uh it's kind of like a left-handed Ian Kinsler uh versus uh offensively even though the Ian Kinsler has better um has a better swing and has more vision. So, you know, I guess I guess it's not exactly like a right-handed Ian Kinsler or a left-handed Ian Kinsler, but he's still very solid. His swing isn't going to kill you. He has a one-handed normal swing, which is fine. It's not going to hurt you too bad. So, uh, so yeah, overall, just a fantastic card. Um, and if you're one of those guys, I know a lot of guys really like to value defense. That's the thing. that, that They want to have a really, really good, sound defensive team. They don't want their team... To, to make any mistakes and if you're that type of person then uh then this guy is the guy for you you can put him in left field you don't have to put a center fielder in left field and the crew that you know however whatever the percentage is that penalty for playing someone in a secondary you don't have to accrue that you can just put him in his primary position and he's going to play great for you so uh so yeah the 94 overall alex gordon coming in at number six at number five, we have the 95 overall Chipper Jones, a switch hitter that it buoys his value quite a bit because offensively he's very, he's very, very good. I mean, 94, 81, 92, 67, 83 vision, 95 discipline. Like he's, he's very, very good uh, offensively, but he doesn't have as much power as maybe you wanted. Maybe you wanted him to kind of have 81 81 power if that were the case and he may even be even higher on this list but the fact that he is a switch hitter does buoy this card a little bit his swing is fine like he's his swing isn't going to hurt you or anything like that the big thing about this card though is that you're not going to get great defense out of him and he's not like super fast or anything like that so you do have to think about that but one of the big benefits of this card is that he can also play third base. So, you know, if you're looking for a third baseman or maybe even like a bench bat who can play left field or third base, something like that, maybe this guy has some value to you there. Um, overall, just a really solid card. Not not spectacular. Like I said, uh, left field has a lot of these cards, a lot of these cards that are very, very solid. They're, they would be a good part of your team, but they're not spectacular. They're not going to be OP or anything like that. So, uh, so yeah, the 95 overall chipper coming in at number five. At number four, we have the 97 overall Cliff Floyd. And this is, you know, just a pure offensive play right here. This guy has a good amount of speed. He has a ton of power. He has very good contact. And he has about average vision. So his PCI size is going to be fine. He doesn't have a swing that's going to hurt you. He has the two-handed long swing. It's going to be fine. His attributes are going to play where they are. And, uh, yeah, just overall just an offensive machine. 
the big problem with him is his defense, as it is with a lot of left fielders. That, that That's going to be kind of a theme here throughout this list, is that a lot of these guys are really good offensively, but they just don't play that good a defense. And I, I'm of the opinion that it doesn't really matter that much. Like, yeah, it might hurt you here or there. They may not be the rangiest in the world, but in left field, it's not – in left field, you care. You should care more about the offensive production than you should about the defensive production. And I do think that his defense will play up a little bit from his attributes just because he does have that 73 speed to fall back on. So that's something to think about too. So yeah, 97 Cliff Floyd at number, what is that, number four. At number three, we have the 94 Lou Brock. And just put your pitchforks away for, for just a moment. Please, I know that a lot of people are going to fucking hate this pick, but I, I just, I see so much value in his 99 speed when 97 stealing. This guy, if he gets on base, it's an automatic triple. I mean, I, I really, I have no problem at all steal, automatically stealing second and automatically stealing third. He is so hard to throw out. He is a nightmare on the base paths and for mo most of the time with guys like that I you, you know you're just lucky to get good contact out of them you it, hardly ever do you get a guy like that who has some power to go along with it but this Lou Brock does he has 78 power versus righties and 99 contact with 80 vision he is uh, uh, versus righties he is I mean, very, very good. I mean, he's like one of the better left fielders in the game offensively. Um, the, you know, obviously he is kind of a platoon guy. He doesn't hit lefties all that well. But I even really, I even hit him versus lefties because all you have to do is like put the ball on the ground and a lot of the times he's just going to beat it out. He's so fast. His speed is a nightmare for other opponents. It, it's, it's a game changer, man. And uh, his defense, you look at that defense at first, and you're like, oh, man, that defense is really bad. But that 87 reaction to go along with 99 speed, he's going to be covering plenty of ground for you. And uh, in the outfield, I don't really think that the, that the actual fielding attribute, I think reaction is more important, and that's what this guy has. So I don't think defensively he's really going to hurt you either. In fact, I think he might be a plus for you defensively. So yeah, this Lou Brock is is a monster. I love this card. Um, I, man, I was even tempted to put him at like number two on this list, but I just couldn't. Uh, the other two guys are just too good offensively. So I put him at number three. Uh, let's move on to the top two. At number two, we have the 99 overall Ralph Kiner. And I thought whenever this card come out that he would be kind of like the Miggy, kind of like the Cal Ripken. You know, one of these guys who has amazing hitting attributes, but it, he would kind of be nerfed because of his swing. But that really isn't the case. He has the same swing as like Andre Dawson. Uh, the two-handed long swing, his his swing is fine, and his attributes are going to play about where they are, which makes this guy just a monster. Defensively, obviously, he's not good. He doesn't have speed or anything, but, I mean, my God, look at those hitting attributes. 92, 98, 95, 99 with 88 vision, 95 discipline. He's he's one of the best hitters in the game. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's really not a lot to say about this card. Offensively, he's a monster. He totally deserves top two on this list, um, but I don't think he has a very good argument for number one, because number one is among one of the best cards in the game, and uh, so yeah, let's move on to that and see who that is. Was there ever any doubt in any of your minds that Ted Williams would be the number one left fielder in the game this year? Did anybody question that? I don't think so. I mean, there, there's just no way to say it's anybody else. I mean, come on. 99-99 versus righties when 99 vision and 99 discipline. He's literally a created player versus righties. He's literally Pepe Alizar versus righties. Or even better, he's better than Pepe Alizar versus righties because this guy... He's, he's the best, like, raw attribute hitter in the game. Oh, and guess what? He has a two-handed compact swing. Best swing in the game. So he's just going <laughs> to, I mean, he, he's silly. He's a silly card. He is going to be destroying 
the ball for you. And versus lefties, oh, okay, well, he must have, like, really heavy platoons or something like that. No, 99 contact versus lefties, 87 power versus lefties. I mean, okay, he has 87 power versus lefties. He's not fucking 99 everything on offense. Okay, I'll give it to you. He's not perfect. He's damn close, though. Okay, so just chill out with your criticisms of this card because he's fucking amazing, right? And, and okay, he's not going to play great defense. Neither does any other left fielder in this game other than Alex Gordon and kind of sort of Andrew Benintendi. Okay, he doesn't have speed. Who does except for that Lou Brock? This guy is an offensive monster. He is going to hit the ball so motherfucking hard for you. Uh, like, I don't I don't think a lot of people comprehend just how good this card is. I, I don't have him on my ranked seasons roster, but I've played with him in, uh, in Battle Royale, and it was like every single time I made contact with the ball, it was at the very least 105 mile per hour exit velocity. He's a monster offensively. He's a nightmare to pitch to. He is one of, if not the best, hitting card in this game. And I include Pepe Alizar in that. At, don't at me, bro. I'm saying it right here. This Ted Williams, I'm not even going to say one of. He is the best hitting card in this game. Other than maybe like your creative player, I guess, if you want to count him. So, uh, so yeah, that is the top 10 left fielders in MLB The Show 17. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said earlier, please like um, and uh, retweet it for me, and you'll be entered into the into the uh, the tournament spot giveaway. And um, yeah, and uh, please leave a comment. Let me know if you agree with this list or not. I'd really appreciate that. And please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. You know, I, I, that that'd be pretty cool too. I would I would really appreciate that. I think that that would be kind of a solid thing to do. So uh, so yeah, guys. I will see you guys later. Um, I'm gonna try to be streaming whenever they come out with the new hardware programs. So uh, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. And I will see you guys later. Peace.